Are you a Christian single person who wants to be married one day, but you're also in a season of life where you're trying to focus more on God, develop into the person who would be ready for a Christian relationship, and you're actively repenting of relationship idols in your heart? If so, here are four ways that you can overcome a relationship idol. Number one, repentance through a relationship fast can actually help you overcome a relationship idol. I'm going to put a card right here for a video that I've previously done on a relationship fast. So feel free to click that card so you can watch that video after this video. But essentially to repent of any sin means you're turning the other direction away from that sin and towards the Lord. Now a relationship fast can help you do that because just like a traditional fast where you're giving up food, the point of a fast is to turn more towards God. So in a normal fast, as you probably know, you give up food for a specific period of time so that you can then use that time where you would be eating for prayer and for seeking the Lord. You're symbolically giving up food to say, what my heart ultimately needs is a relationship with you, Lord. You're, you're totally focusing on God in a more intentional way during this specific fasting period. And likewise, a relationship fast is when you give up thinking about relationships, pursuing a relationship. You're giving that desire up for a specific period of time so that you can realign your heart with God and you can completely focus on Him in a more intentional way. For example, uh, in in Joel chapter 2, verses 12 through 13, we see this principle that is seen throughout Scripture where fasting is used as a tool to help you with repentance. It says, Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The second way that you can overcome a relationship idol is to pray more about your relationship with God and less about your relationship desires with someone from the opposite sex. So one question that I get a lot from people who are working in this area to overcome a relationship idol is, should I keep praying about my desire for a spouse? Should I keep asking God for a spouse? And what I want to say first off is that I don't feel comfortable an answering that question for individual people because for one, the Bible says pray about everything. Thing, pray without ceasing. So if you feel led to continue to pray about a spouse, I would never tell you not to do that. However, I do think that at times it can be healthy and God could be asking you to stop praying about your relationship desires so that you can focus more on your desire for God. So I don't think it's, it, it's wrong to pray about anything, but we have to be in tune with what the Holy Spirit is actually telling us to pray about. So always pray, but sometimes what you're praying about can be adapted. In addition to that, sometimes when you stop praying so much for a spouse, it'll actually make your relationship prayers in the future even more powerful because now your motives will be right and you'll be rightly aligned with God. For example, in James chapter 4, verse 3, it says, You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend on your passions. So again, when you ask God for an idol, he's not going to bless you with an idol because an idol is going to take you away from him. So sometimes to get that prayer answered for a godly spouse, you have to focus on your heart and your relationship with God so you stop idolizing relationships, which allows God to bless you with a godly relationship, which will help you draw closer to God rather than giving you an idol that will pull you away from God. God will never bless you with an idol.
The third way that you can overcome a relationship idol is to focus on overcoming obsessive thoughts about a certain person you wish you could be with. Maybe you want to be with your ex and you want to still be in that relationship or maybe you have like a really bad crush on somebody and they just don't like you that way. If you are obsessively thinking about a certain person, this is going to fuel the fire of an idol in your heart, a relationship idol. So you have to work on controlling your thoughts. And that's a biblical principle for all areas of life, not just relationship idols. We have to take every thought captive and submit it to Christ. We want our minds to be focused on things that are glorifying to God. For example, in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, Paul says, We destroy arguments in every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. I actually have a specific video on how you can stop thinking about a certain person, which I'll leave in a card right here. Just tap that card and at the end of this video, you can watch that video on overcoming obsessive thoughts about someone. And finally, the fourth way that you can overcome a relationship idol is to stop thinking so much and start serving other people in a tangible ways. So what, one of the things I talk about in that video about overcoming obsessive thoughts is that you have to replace thoughts with something else. You can't just not think about something. So one way to stop thinking about someone is to start doing other things that keep your mind busy and really start doing things that God would want you to be doing instead of just sitting around thinking about someone. And the obvious thing that all Christians are called to do is to serve people in need. So one way that you can overcome relationship idols is to get outside of yourself, to start looking into the world and start seeing areas that God's gifted you to contribute to the needs of the world and to advance the kingdom of God in tangible ways. For example, in Romans 12 verse 21, it says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Also in Galatians 5, 13 through 14, it says, for you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. One of the best ways to help yourself is by helping other people. Don't forget to tap that subscribe button if you haven't joined this growing community. I talk a lot about Christian singleness, relationships, and how to glorify God in every area of your life. So if these are topics that are interesting to you, again, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and God bless.